Guys, welcome back to the channel. We are here with Keith Baker. Keith and I go way back. We shot in 2017. 17 in Texas. Yeah, we shot the Precision Rifle Series finale. I learned a ton from Keith. Keith's been involved developing the new ACC. I wanted to do the interview with Keith because he's actually shot this thing. So Keith, take us through this. Man, I love this chassis. So we'll start in the front and kind of work our way to the back. Uh, our new Elite Series chassis is uh, we started with a stiffer four end. We widened the four end. We made it a little bit wider. We went through, and uh, uh, I don't know exactly how much wider it is, but it's significantly okay. wider. I mean, when you throw it on a bag, it pulls that bag quite a bit more. Right. And this is going to give us more sort of stiffness. A little more stability, yeah. and and, uh, and also a lot more stiffness. The key was when you put it on the bipod and you induced a you know a tight a lot of flex. We didn't want to see that transfer through the right. Yeah. Also, we wanted to get into some better night vision stuff for okay. Leo. So if we wanted to go into like next level night vision or thermal, we wanted a platform that was wide enough that we could actually bolt a, a, a rigid top to it and that we wouldn't get, as we move the bipod, we wouldn't get torque that would cause the so, uh, night vision to not line up. So I'll roll in some shots, but the top of this is actually wide enough where it's being drilled and tapped so we can actually bolt things down, whereas the previous generation sort of night vision hood we had on the basically first ACC was M-lock over the top. And the other problem you had with the M-lock over the top is if you like running your weights a little bit more forward, you were sacrificing space to put weights. So this is a nice addition that you're not interfering with that. Absolutely. And then some people like to run their thumb over the top and grip on the rifle. So instead of the night vision bridge, we also have a, a pro series bridge that you can actually grip and bind down, not binding on the barrel, not influencing torque or That's point impact cool. shift. And uh, you can move it fore and aft wherever it lines up for you with the good texture on the top. Now my question of this is can I stack, like if I wanted to basically have like two in a row, you could stack two in a row if you're ready. There's two right there. Yeah. It's pretty and, awesome. And it's gonna give you like a little bit of you know, another option to personalize your chassis a little bit. So if you like sort of the, the ACC vibe, but you prefer a Dean Pro's 4 in, you can actually like run two of those and sort of have almost like a hybrid ESS looking type of chassis. So that's pretty cool. Absolutely. And we were able to lower this height down. Okay. The goal was is to try and bring this down as close to on plane as the pick rail on the action. That way we're not having an issue, any issues dominating the thermals okay. and so forth. We're getting this action as stiff or the, the front of the chassis is stiff and on plane with the top of the Picatinny rail or the, the center of the uh, the action so we can try and help that night vision line up better. Okay. And question with regards to the guys running the you know MTU thick barrels, we've got enough clearance here for basically a straight taper or what? 100%. Okay, cool. So that's obviously important. Yep. So next I guess we got to talk about the Baker Wings and I will roll in some shots for you guys to show the details up close of this kind of stuff but fun story in 2017 I was shooting a stage and then all of a sudden you know one of my targets goes bang and the RO gives impact and turns out Tom from Armageddon Gear had sort of gotten crossed up on his stage and shot one of my stages and I actually ended up borrowing to, when I reshot the stage like the, which was a great ops play. It was the great like, ops. Yeah. Yeah, the first I Prototype. think there was only four of them in the country. Dave had one uh, who makes it and uh, I had one and I think Ken's Nosky had yeah. So I ended up, end up reshooting against everyone's advice because I was on an 8 out of 10 or something like that at the time I stopped shooting. Everyone was like, Pete, take the 8 because if you get a 5 now, no go. So I shoot this with the grey ops plate and clean the stage. But things have changed since then. So now, Keith, tell us about the Baker wings. All right, so the wings actually go on the side of the chassis. They're M-locked, they bolt on, they work with a lot of different chassis systems. Uh, and so the idea is so you can do something with your non-shooting hand. So the hand that, that, that's actually out grabbing the bag is designed for barricade use. Throw a bag on, on a prop, you throw this on top of it, it wraps around the bag, and you grab and perform a wrist lock. Just like if you were shooting a pistol, you're using the bone structure through your body to drive and mitigate that recoil. You know, if you hold on to a scope, you're trying to stop it with muscle. That's not the case. If you're able to do that drive, you're able to grab, you're, there's thumb grooves on here, you would actually grab in, grab the front of the bag, and drive that recoil. That, that allows, the other thing is when you lock that bag, the, the plates are on the side and then the bottom is a little bit loader. It kind of looks like the hull of a boat, yeah. okay? So when you lock that sand, 
but now that rifle can't. If let's say you're in a poor position, you just weren't, you couldn't get as square as you wanted to. You're a little offset. Now that rifle, because it's locked in that weight, has to only track back. It can't slip out into your shoulder pocket where you get a little air on your impact, or you can't see the bullet fly. Now it's coming right back. You're still in your eye box, and you're watching that bullet track into target. That's awesome. So, I'm super excited about that. It's and been a couple years, and I didn't want anybody to have them, yeah. but now. You know, so did you make <laughs> I was a little jealous. Did you make the most of it while before it was available? I really did. Okay, that's I good. I really did. Now I'm getting too old, so yeah. it's time for everybody else to have it. Yeah, things have changed too. You know, our priorities <laughs> changed. Like at one point in my thing, I wanted to win all the matches. Now I just want to have fun, and I think you're kind of there too. I'm there. It's, yeah. it's really nice to hit that point in my life where I can be good enough to compete against myself. But I don't have to do. I, I don't have to go farther. Than yeah, that. I'm pretty comfortable. And it also, at, at a certain level, there's like a little bit of an happy element in the sport too. And like you don't have to deal with that. I don't. It's, yeah. it's beautiful. Yeah. So. So what's really interesting about this, and obviously we have a little machine shop in South Africa, so I can kind of appreciate some of the stuff. But the sort of angles and things in the Baker wings, like the ergonomics, how it's been machined to fit your hand, and the textures and the stuff on the top is like again. As we've come to expect from MDT's next level machine. So, I mean, that's, you could have made this way simpler and gotten, you know, 75% of the result, but the fact that they've gone over the top to, like, basically over engineer this. Oh, yeah. It's, it's badass. The original ACC, when they asked us to come up with something better, it was really tough. Yeah. I'm like, we struggled to find a list of things to justify making enhancements, yeah. right? That we just couldn't do small in a production run that, we, that would justify a complete yeah. system. And then we kept finding, you know, we did a lot of testing. We started test, torque testing on it on, and, and, and vibration testing. We yeah. tried to find different ways to make a system better. So as we widened this out, we widened it all the way through the action area too. Ah, this is all thicker see, through this yeah. area here. And what that does, it doesn't allow any flex or torque. So we're trying to mitigate that. And then you see this line continues all the way now back into the buttstock. Yeah. So that energy that transfers through that forend can't flex and bind and twist or torque. Everything only has one direction to go. I actually never noticed this. Yeah. So yeah. if I grab if I grab this for example, we can see this line getting interrupted here. Like this is basically what we used to have. Exactly. Over here, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, so now it continues straight back through into the buttstock. So now all that energy only has one direction to go and that's back and not flex up. Okay. Super cool. So as part of that, if we come back into the buttstock, we've got that straight line. Then we decided to do a uh, connector plate here on the bottom, which acts as a butt hook if you grab it. Okay. But it also keeps any flex from happening this way at this smallest yeah, point. It's, yeah, everything's reinforced. So again, all the energy only has one direction to go and that's back. So now let's jump forward a little bit. Magwell, way more aggressive, okay? And there's some special goodness in here, which is a game changer. Oh yeah, the Magwell, so we extended it down a little bit farther, right? So we don't have any interference with your uh, magazine or, you bag, know, yeah. or, or your bag. It just gives you also the other point of contact. So it's not the contact here. When you get the back of your bag and the magwell comes together, now you have almost twice the contact and yeah. it helps you in most directions. So having having contact all the way through here in this wider platform, and then when you contact that down, that's more support, yeah. more things touch, less things move. Okay, cool. Yep. And they've also like sort of kept in the same styling here, but it's you know it's new, it's it's a big enough change and Initially, when I saw the sort of you know the photos Martin put out on Instagram, which was obviously very early, I wasn't a big fan. But seeing this thing in person, I'm sold. Absolutely. Okay. Tell me about. I think we should be able to camp this over a little bit. So over here is some secret. Well, not secret stuff, but like it's not secret anymore. Patented stuff that has trickled down from Jay Allen. It, yes. Yeah. Yes. So what we have is an adjustable magwell. So. You know, we make, I think, the best mags, but, you know, everybody uses different mags. Dimensions are slightly different yeah. from one to another. Every action's a little bit different. Everything needs tweaked just a little bit. So, uh, what we have is an adjustable magwell here that we can loosen and tighten the front here. We can adjust the torque fore and aft on your magazine to make sure that it's supported really well left yeah. and right. Then, we have an adjustable mag catch that we can loosen up and then we have a set screw that goes in the bottom. Okay. And so you can put this up in there, 
tighten it where it's as snug as you want it this way. And then you can run that mag catch tightening screw up until yeah. it tightens up, back it off a half a turn or turn or whatever, whatever gives you that right amount then lock it in. There's a lock screen that okay. goes in here. And is so. that going to help sort of, I've seen a lot of guys, you know, you put your bag down on the stage and the bag's sort of pushing against your magazine. Is that going to help mitigate a lot of that? Because were, I was seeing massive feed issues. A hundred percent. Well, the extended front front tab will do that as well. Sure, yeah. And then that, that will absolutely keep that from binding and also help it feed better, yeah. right? You don't have to, if you're against the bag, some guys wouldn't feed correctly. Exactly. If you can keep diet. everything upright, and then you can predictably have everything work the way it's supposed to. To make it as snug and as tight. Also, we really hogged out the front of this. Okay. I mean, what, what is that? Three quarter of an inch or an inch farther? I mean, it just, you put it up close and it wants to go in, yeah. that, in, that, in that magazine. Yeah. And that's something about the first ACCs, especially the first couple of units, the Magua was a little bit tight. It was, yeah. it was. Yeah. And now we've got that hogged out where you just get it close and push. Okay, is hogged out an of the official term? Is that going in the marketing stuff? Yeah, well, I haven't, I haven't quite discussed that <laughs> on Down and Road, but today it's hogged out. Okay, cool. Tell me about this. Okay. The game changer for ACC1 was running a nice little thick thumb shelf. They've done away with that and now it's adjustable. So, so one of the first things that MDT did, and they were one of the first ones that I know of, is they had the adjustable grip. You could adjust yeah. it for, aft, a little bit of tilt. So you get a true 90 degree pull on the trigger here. Yeah. Right? So now we have that, but we took it the next step further. We went to an adjustable thumb rest here. This thumb rest isn't just the thumb rest that's bolted on the side of the chassis. With two screws, you can loosen this up and you can move it forward, backward, and tilt it both directions. Oh, you can tilt too? You can adjust the tilt. Oh, of course, yeah, you can see it there. Okay, awesome. Even yeah. better. So the beauty of that is not everybody's hands the same shape. Their thumbs aren't at the same angle. So when you build your grip, whatever style of grip you have, yeah. now you can find what your natural angle to your thumb is. And what I found is when you shoot really fast, and, and you have those natural ergonomics that all of a sudden you're not influencing any negative yeah. torque with that hand if okay. it's set up correctly. Yeah, and guys, precision rifle, the, the biggest thing people overlook is setting up their rifle comfortably for them. I see so often people taking, you know, 15, 20 seconds to get their first round off because they're trying to get comfortable behind their rifle. You set your gun up correctly, I mean, it's just you're making your life so much easier. So having sort of the ability to tweak all the little things, it's just in a sport of marginal gains, this is where it's at. Yeah. Absolutely. So quick question, if we're running sort of the old school grip, like the one we both like, the smaller grip, is this sort of, the, what are we calling this piece? A connector bar. Okay, so would that connector bar still work That's or no That's the technical go? term for today. Okay, cool. <laughs> to be established. Yeah. Right. Okay, but probably not. Was it, it seems probably to be hollowed maybe. out for it. Probably maybe. Okay, we'll see. We'll, we'll do the maybe. We'll see. Okay. Now, if I wanted to adjust this, and I don't have my, you know, the X-Range or the Allen key, where do I find that? Oh, this is great. So, we'll talk about the Elite Cheek Press later, but all we got to do is push the button, pull it off, and we've got some wrenches here. So we can put a wrench here for your scope, and a wrench to do all the, the work in the chassis. Just push the button let it down, it locks back in. So now if we want to adjust our, our yeah, maybe switch with the foot yeah. sides here. If we want to adjust uh, our grip. Let's do this, we're a little bit out of frame there. Yeah, there we go. There we go. If we want to adjust our grip, now we've got that ability to move that grip forward. We'll do so. Now we can move the grip forward and backwards so it can fit your hand correctly. And then we can go into our thumb shelf here. And this is M-Lock. It could also be used as a utility rail on the opposite side, but okay. I like to have one both on the right and the left. You could theoretically run a dope on there if you really wanted to. It might be a little or bit a close. Watch, or a watch. Or timer, right? Or we could run it up on one of the yeah. other accessory ports up here. But as I was showing you, this goes forward and backwards, and this full tilt. We yeah. can tilt this the more I loosen it all the way around. Yeah. That's amazing. So, that's really cool. Okay, I, so and now. something that you guys might like too, you know, I had, I've got a few of the first generation ACCs, and something that was a little bit annoying was the little, you know, adjuster wheel screws with the wheels, sort the of nuts. come loose on yeah. you over a lot of use. That's gone. So this push right. button thing solved that problem, and you're off to the races. So I'm pumped about that. And this is a neat little way to store store tools. I actually saw this on some air rifle chassis that I have, and I was like, well, why don't people do it? But once you get your height the way you want it, you can. All you do is tighten the thumb screw down. One thumb screw. Yeah. And it locks down. You can 
grip the whole chassis up. Okay. Same thing with the link the pull. Link the pull. Push the button, run it in, run it all the way out. You still have your up and down and your left and right. Yep. So you still have all that. Now question for you as a shooter. Are you setting your rifle up to the point where you're favoring like your right hand side of your right handed shooter or are you setting centering up on everything? So I used to set it up where it was always right hand side because that was 80% of our shots. But now we have our the well we had our, our elite cheek rest for a while, yeah. but now it's gonna be on this. So the advantage of that it's a little bit narrower. Okay? So on a wider cheek rest, you gotta lay your head over to the side to look through the scope. So now, to, to shoot, nowadays, we want to be in a combat situation. We want our head up, erect, spatial awareness. We want to be able to acquire targets easily. That's tough to do if you're looking like this, right? But if you're up like this, you can see all the way around you yeah. in every direction. So the Elite Cheek Rest is narrower. So now, I can come in and have my head a little more erect. If I set my scope up, my butt stock, everything right, I'm looking like this. Now I have almost 180 yeah. degrees of peripheral vision versus this, where I'm only seeing this window right oh, sure. here, okay? Yeah. The other cool thing about this is it falls slightly away. Okay. So under recoil, I'm not getting hit in the face and be in while I'm trying to track that bullet to target because we don't have anybody telling us where we hit. Yeah. Right? So now when I shoot, it falls away. And now I'm not being impacted and disrupted and I'm able to track that bullet okay. easier to target than doing that. So it's good. Uh, this will come standard on this model and can be ordered for, for the old yeah, ACC. You can, you can I use it. Yeah, I use it all the time. And it's comfortable. It. It's got this beautiful neoprene with the little MET logo in. Yep. It's phenomenally done. Okay, so I guess the last thing we have to chat about before we get to this baby is um, something we can't chat about, apparently. No, no, no. <laughs> no. We're gonna actually, they're just they're just available now for the uh, original ACC, okay. and they'll be available for this as well. When it launches. We, yeah. Which we don't know. We don't have a date. We're but... thinking sometime in summer. Okay. Right? Yeah. So All good things come to those away. Absolutely. So, as we build these rifles heavier and heavier, now we're getting 20, 22, 24, 26, 28 pounds of a rifle, yeah. right? So when you pull the trigger on that, that energy has to go somewhere, right? So now we're guiding it all into the shooter, right? And or through the chassis system to, to eliminate the torque, but we put vibration dampeners in the chassis and that gives that energy a place to go. Okay. So we're controlling the harmonics, so hopefully we're receiving stable harmonics back through the action and predictable ones. Whereas vibration can come here and we don't have craziness happening through the whole chassis. Okay. And it's amazingly different. Okay. The vibration. I'm very keen to try this. Yeah. So keep you, you've actually shot this chassis in a match. I have. Okay. Now, I'm fortunate enough where I'm going to be flying home with this chassis, so I'm pumped to bring you guys more content on the range. Is there anything we missed here? Obviously, you guys know the weights. You know yeah, the weights the full has been internal a thing, yeah. weight system for this. Yeah. Uh, we're actually coming out with a one-piece weight system if you use all the internals. Yeah, I the, do. The, yeah. So instead of using five individual weights, we're going to have one uniform weight system that goes front to back. Okay. Uh, and uh, four inch length is it the same the as four the four length is longer, but it or is the same length, but it's moved forward just a little bit. Okay. So I would say it's about I don't know the exact number, inch, inch and okay. a half longer, uh, just because of we've moved some of this forward. Okay. Okay. Something we also haven't mentioned, but I mean, if you're watching the ACC video, you probably already know that there's a machine in Arca Rail, so there's no need to add an Arca Rail. Obviously, most of our accessories nowadays are Arca. It's the way to go, honestly. Um, something I did notice just looking down here on the old ACC, a feature I never used, maybe you don't even know your ACC has this. If you wanted to put in the weights but your rifle is already zeroed, you can actually undo the little four screws on the front and slide your weights in and out. This is no, not an option anymore. So, uh, we haven't done that on this model okay. for one reason. Okay. So, out of almost everybody we talked to, it was a great feature. It was a fantastic idea. Yeah. Okay. Never used it. Used it one time <laughs> yeah. because you had to try it. Yeah. And then nobody ever did. It. Yeah. Okay. So what we were able to do is achieve a lot stiffer forehand by making that one solid sure. piece. It's a little more of a machining process. We're not just blowing an end mill out the end. Yeah. Now we've got a mill around. But now, I mean, there's significantly more structure when you go out the front of that beam and then it's connected Absolutely. at the front and not bolted together. And so. also for the for the Cerakoters out there, it's one less little part to Cerakote. So that's always a good thing. And four less screws. Yeah. So, <laughs> is there anything else we missed? Uh, you know, another thing I don't know that we talk about a lot at MDT is 
a buttstock. Okay. Nice. Okay. You know, MDT offers a short and long buttstock with almost everything you do because shooting originally started with out of bipod. It yeah. was slung, and so our length of pull was some measurement that we used from our thumb to forefinger yeah. and elbow, and that's not realistic today. We use bipods now. We sell a lot of bipods. Yeah. The majority of us use a barricade or a square shoulder. We use a bipod. So we're not out into the shoulder, up yeah. kneel on one leg forward. It's not like that anymore. So now a shorter buttstock is, you know, and there's different frames, right? Yeah. You know, you're a little bigger than me, you know. I shoot 34 <laughs> centimeters. So what kind of length of pull are you running? I actually run a 12 and a half. Okay. Pull. So I'll have and a little I'm graphic to see two. how close we are to each other. But I, I run a really short length of pull. Okay. okay. And the reason I do that is I run the rifle medially up underneath yeah. my body. Yeah. When I push you here, you move. Yeah. When I push you here, you don't. Right? So in order to see that little bit of recoil, you need to be perfectly square to the target. If you give up a foot one way or another, yeah. you've already lost that battle because you've lost that structure. Yeah. Right? So then I want to get that rifle way up in here yeah. underneath my body. Can't that rifle so I miss my collarbone? I'm even with my neck. And so MDT is is you know offers that short, offers a long that fits your build because you need to build this system around you yeah. to take optimum. You know. So uh, if somebody's efficient. if somebody's buying a kit, is that going to be an option for us to say I want a long one, I want a short one? Well, sometimes I find with those kind of things less options almost when your retailing is better. But I'm sure, yeah. So I'm not sure up? how this is going to sell. Okay. Whether it is going to sell with the short, with the option to go to an extension, or whether you would have to buy yeah. the different butt section if you want the longer or shorter. I'm a dumb trigger puller. I really don't know what the, what the sales guys. You're certainly a trigger puller. I don't know about dumb. What the sales um, guys, you know, or what the marketing team has. Been. Okay. So yeah. I'm going to put you a little bit on the spot now. In 10 words or less, thoughts on the Gen 3 Razor. I don't think there's a better optic on the market for what we're doing now. Okay, we'll take it. <laughs> okay, keep. Glass I think is clear. This it's is an amazing. Product. Awesome. This is without a doubt going to be at this point in time the most comprehensive walkthrough of the ACC Elite out there. I hope the audio was good. Shot show. There's music. There's people. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Great and uh, thanks for everything you do for the sport and all the knowledge you just shared in this video. It's amazing. For the guys in South Africa, if you're keen to have Keith out to come do some training, we can set up something like that. Um, I'm sure we can all learn a hell of a lot. I'm looking forward to spending more time with this and dominating some NRL matches in the very near future. So thanks again for your time and thanks for always pushing the envelope with what you do. Guys, make sure you please subscribe and thanks to MBT for kicking ass and making awesome products. Bye. Dude, you crushed it. One take, like seasoned pros.